Hi everyone, uh, we continue learning Open Cascade, and for today I thought it could be quite interesting to follow one of the official tutorials published by uh, the Open Cascade company. And here we are on their official website looking at this bottle tutorial page. Uh, this tutorial is quite advanced uh, in the sense that uh, here we are supposed to build, you know, quite, I would say, realistic shape because it's a hollow solid. Also with some nice surface feature for this uh, modeled thread on the top. And uh, also what, what, I, what I like about this tutorial is that it comes with the code snippet at the end. So we can just copy and paste uh, what they have here and just give it a try to see how things work. And also I'll try to comment um, more or less line by line what's happening here what should be emphasized what should be what you should be aware of when you are doing this sort of an exercise so let's start uh, actually i'm just going to copy and paste the whole thing from here if you want you can also go and read this tutorial i did it myself today and actually it was quite okay it was quite detailed uh, nothing bad to say about this tutorial. I will just copy this uh, code snippet and paste it to my sort of a main function, but instead of using uh, these simplistic main functions as we um, have uh, been doing all the time, I'll use uh, another environment with VTK, with uh, nice inspection facilities, because I want to you know, uh, be able to analyze what's going on in more detail and to see each curve and each you know surface precisely what it is and how it works how it's connected and to also to experiment more flexibly with the geometric entity so that's why i'm going to use analysis situs and uh, i'm i'm just using a sort of you know analog of uh, main function it's a tcl uh, function here it also accepts RGC and RGV for the number of uh, arguments and the argument line itself, but also it has this uh, instance of interpreter here that I would use to access plotter and to immediately draw stuff on the display. I mean, it's up to you uh, which environment to use, but I would prefer to use it here for this lesson. So I'm just copying and pasting this code snippet from the official website, and I'm not going to to have like a function here because I already have a function so let me just uh, let me just uh, keep it uh, like this and also this return statement is also something I would like to eliminate from my code actually I am already quite prepared because you can see that I have this uh, block of include statements uh, this is something you would start uh, with I'll fix indentation and then we have some modeling parameters here like width and uh, height and also thickness of the body so it's an exercise on parametric modeling and it means essentially that you have a function with three parameters and by uh, running this function with different parameter values you can obtain different variations of your design so it's as simple as that there is no constraints there is no any declarative uh, modeling or any I don't know whatever it's it's even not that feature based it's just a function just a modeling function and it's arguably um, the easiest way of parametric modeling with open cascade just build your function with set of arguments and you are done you have this um, you have this you know family of uh, parametric uh, models defined like that so uh, they need to have this my width, my thickness, and also my height. And I'm going to read their values from the interpreter because I want to kind of uh, let the user specify the values. There we go. So if those values are not specified, then we use those default values instead. I think it should be compilable right now. So let's try to run it for the first time. So if you are curious how it all works, it's just a library that is loaded dynamically to analysis situs. Also, one thing to mention here is that I am using Open Cascade version 7.4. So now uh, it's just, I think it's just test. Yeah, it's just test command here. So if I run it like this, I am going to have 
something. Actually, this code was executed, but I don't see any result here. I also use this dump all to read in order not to um, not to repeat those commands next time I run the application. So let me close it for now. And uh, what I want to do now is I want to uh, take the result of my modeling. I think that the result is this variable ARS. And I just go and draw it on my screen, on my scene. And I'm pretty sure that the result of modeling is available in ARS. Uh, variable. All right, there we go. We can run this test command. We can see that something appeared on the screen. So this is uh, this bottle. I also want to make it to expose it for analysis to make it available for inspection. That's why I go and set uh, this bottle as a part. I have this object bottle here. So I'll set it as an active part and also fit my scene like this. So there we go. This is uh, the result of modeling. And I can also use those parameters that I expose to the to the TCL function. So I can use this dash W for the width. Uh, let it be like 30. And then I can use dash H for the height, 40. And for the thickness, I have minus T. Let it be 10. So we have the whole parametric family of uh, this bottle. Like this, we can build different uh, variations of the shape. So now what we uh, can see from this model here is, okay, this is a cylindrical surface. Then we have a bunch of uh, fillet surfaces here, also represented with cylinders. And I think it's a sphere, right? It's a sphere. Uh, here we have this uh, helical feature for the model thread and also we have uh, this strange feature line here although these two faces are kind of coplanar and i suppose they could be simplified so what we can potentially do uh, we can potentially fuse this helical thread to the body to the neck and also maximize those faces over here. So let's start with that. We can also do it programmatically. I just want to experiment here a bit to see if it's, I mean, if it's not going to give any problems. So let me just go and maximize all the faces. So you can see that uh, these artifacts uh, disappear. And now let me also see what we, what do we have inside this part? If I explore it. It's a compound, although I would expect it to be a solid. And this compound contains two solids. So I think one solid is for the bottle itself and another solid is for the model thread. And okay, let's try to explore this whole thing. And we have two solids. One is for the bottle. And yep, another is for the, for the thread. For this helical feature. I'll try to fuse them. Bob. Bob is boolean operation. Fuse. Res. Then solid 1 and solid 2. All right, we have something here. If I set it as a part and remove this object from the scene, seems like it works. Let me see it from the explorer window. It's still a compound, but this compound contains just one solid over here. And that's quite expected, I'd say. One shell and a bunch of faces inside. Also, let's check if this solid is valid. So we see that topologically this shape is sound. Uh, we do not have any troubles, any problems with this geometry and uh, this uh, helical uh, feature is now like a real feature of the, of the part and we can see it also from the domain of their host or support cylindrical surface. You see these nice cuts here and all those edges representing the intersection curve between uh, this helical feature and the cylinder. And for the tolerance, um, all right, so Tolerance is more or less good. You see that we, we do have some defects with the tolerance. 
on the cylindrical feature, but the tolerance is still quite okay. It's one thousandth of uh, measurement unit that is basically millimeters, but here it's possibly centimeters because I mean it's we use 12 is like 15, uh, 30. That's probably too small to be considered millimeters. All right, so I think that all in all the shape is quite okay. And now let's see how uh, how we are supposed to build it using open casket. Just like let's go and uh, follow along this tutorial. So we have our parameters and then we define the profile. And uh, we define the profile using five points uh, given some coordinates that are derived from uh, that are derived from these parameters and you can also uh, notice that the last uh, coordinate here is always zero it means that the profile is defined completely in x o y plane it's x o y plane all right so we have these five points defining our support points for the profile and then we also build a series of uh, parametric curves. So uh, here we are working with geometry. We, we are working with geometric entities uh, because we we are having here this uh, geom underscore something, and here we have geom trimmed curve. And this trimmed curve can contain any type of the basic curve. It can be line segment. It can be arc of a circle. It can be piece of a spline uh, curve. So uh, the idea of uh, geom trimmed curve is just to trim your existing curve with uh, parameters and this way to keep only the portion of the curve that is necessary for modeling. And as we can see, uh, here uh, they use GC, which is sort of geometric construction operators, uh, to build an arc of a circle by three points and also to make a couple of segments. And um, why not to draw them? So I'll just use exactly the same names uh, for visual debugging. And let it be like, I don't know, yellow for the arc of the circle. Also, uh, we can draw the orientation tip to see the direction of the curve derivative. All right, so uh, you can see now that we have those curves. Indeed, they are defined in their uh, X or Y plane. So if I go and uh, hide my part, I see those curves and you can see also these small errors that are determined by the parameterization of the curve. So it's all fine and I think the next stage, uh, the next step of this tutorial was to uh, build a wire out of this curve chain and then to uh, make like a mirror transformation so that to complete this contour to uh, give it like a symmetrical piece. Uh, all right, so let's close it for now. Indeed, what do we have here? Uh, we have three edges constructed out of those uh, curves, H1, H2, and H3. And then we construct right away a contour. It's a wire. There are different ways how you can create a contour. And here one of the simple inline constructors uh, is used. So we just pass uh, these three edges here and then we define the transformation so it's going to be a mirror transformation uh, the transformation of symmetry with respect to the x-axis and we take this contour we take this wire and we uh, make like a transformed copy of this wire so we create a, like a mirror copy of uh, this wire and then we create another wire uh, that will contain both uh, pieces of uh, of the contour, and this way we obtain uh, the ultimate and uh, the final contour. So let's probably draw it also here. All right, let's see. So as you can see, this new entity appeared. It's the wire. And the next step would be to sweep to extrude uh, this wire along the OZ axis but in order to do that we need first to create like a face to fill this contour with material to make a planner face and then to make a prism out of this face 
And for that, I mean, it's quite conventional modeling operator. And here to make a prism, you will also have to specify not only the direction of uh, of the sweep, but also the height, uh, the height of the of the of the prism you want to build. And it's quite straightforward. We make a face out of our wire. We do not pass any surface here because the wire is planar. Well, I think that if we keep it like this. Uh, then this Bira Builder API make face will try to extract the plane by itself. We can probably potentially ease its life a bit by passing uh, like a real plane here, because you see there is also a version of this constructor accepting this uh, GPPLN plane. If we don't pass it there, then uh, this tool will automatically uh, get the plane out of the vertices of the wire. So if you want to avoid any unnecessary computation, we can potentially go and define the plane by ourselves. Let's try this. Let's try to avoid useless computation and create a plane by ourselves. So it's plane X, O, Y with origin in 0, 0, 0, and then it has a normal direction in DZ direction. Incomplete type is not allowed, it means that we have to go and include this GPPLN class explicitly over here, and once we are done with that, we can go and pass it here. Actually, it's not going to change anything, we just save uh, like some CPU cycles from uh, trying to guess what could be the plane uh, by the wire. Here we have everything to build our prism and we sweep a prism using this Bira Prima PI make prism, passing there our face and our extrusion vector. So here we switch from our planar geometry to a real solid geometry. So I would expect, but once this line is executed, we will have a prism already constructed. I can see that already here I have this couple of faces and it's quite clear why they appear because this wire if you remember I mean it was uh, it constructed from two halves of, of the contour and actually uh, this wire if I set this wire as an active part and forget about those warnings here I can also visualize its vertices and you see that there is one vertex here it's not that visible but let me change the background. So you can see that there is a vertex here. And when we sweep a prism out of this vertex, uh, we get an edge. So this vertex generates an edge. And that's why in the uh, body, in the prism, we have this edge here. So we have this body now and we are going to make fillets. And to make fillets, we are using this BRAP Fillet API uh, Make Fillet tool of Open Cascade. It's initialized from our uh, solid body. And here we are supposed to enumerate the edges that we want to blend. And in this particular example, we just want to blend all the edges. In this code, we just run the explorer. We say that we want to iterate our body by edge type of subshape. And then we take all the edges here. And by the way, I think that uh, const reference is missing. And when we add uh, the next edge to fill it to, uh, to our make fillet tool, and we also specify the radius of the fillet. And then we go on with the next edge. So there is no way in this code to specify what I want to blend, for example, only bottom edges or any specific edges. It will blend all the edges in the model. And it will be indeed more difficult to programmatically select some of the, of the entities. You'll have to have some selection logic, some selection mechanism to do that. So let's keep it simple. Let's uh, just uh, continue uh, blending all the edges. And we now have this my body variable redefined with the a result of uh, blending. And I also return uh, TCL OK right here so that we'll see only this result of modeling and we'll not see uh, the final geometry. And I can even, you know, I can even name it like a bottle so that the rest of my TCL code will 
be working nicely. All right, so we run it and you see that fillets worked. So this is quite okay. This is quite what we expected to have at this stage. And of course, I mean, there are different options how you can um, make a fillet on an edge. For example, you can even make like a variable radius fillet. That's probably less conventional, but quite, quite an interesting option for you to be aware of. So the idea of the following step is to build this neck feature. It's a tiny cylinder that we are going to fuse uh, with the prism, with our prismatic uh, shape. We have this point, that's the center of our neck. Then we have neck axis. It's also, it's an axis of the cylinder, of the corresponding cylinder. And we associate this uh, local coordinate system, like we built this local coordinate system to, to, to be able to build a cylinder, to be able to run this BREP Prim API make cylinder, it would accept this GPX2 and that's why we need to have one. And uh, this uh, GPX2 is initialized from the neck location and neck axis. And now we have a couple of uh, derived parameters, neck radius and neck height, something you can also play with if you want and we build this neck as a feature it's just a single cylinder so I'm, I think it's quite obvious actually I'm not going to draw it uh, but uh, the interesting part of it is this fuse invocation because we want now to fuse our neck cylinder with the rest of the body so we can now probably just go and draw this result this intermediate result all right so you see it is quite okay like this and uh, if i made this views uh, before my uh, fillet operation then the result will be different i'll also have a fillet right here so i can i mean do this as well possibly and just move uh, this code for fillets right after uh, right after views like here and you'll see how the result is going to be different because i think uh, i mean the logic is still okay we still iterate over all the edges of the model and they are still blended you see it's quite different because we also had this sharp edge the prism uh, uh, was fused with the cylindrical neck and then all the edges in the fused geometry were blended that's probably less uh, what we wanted to have because it's uh, it starts it starts to look a bit strange uh, that's why I should probably go and restore the original state of things. Alright, so let's move fillets as they were initially. And now we want to build a hollow solid. This is one of the most advanced modeling functions you would expect to find in any geometric modeling library. And sometimes this operation really fails. In open cascade, it's probably not super robust operation, but here it worked. And to make it work, what you do? Actually, we need to find uh, we need to find a face to remove, and in our case, it's going to be the top face uh, on the neck. So let's see how we are supposed to find it, because actually there is no any identifier for such a face, and we are going to find it. We are going to find it uh, geometrically. So basically here we iterate our body by faces with uh, this old good top exp explorer. Then we obtain, uh, we, we get a face and again I think that const reference is missing. So we get a face and then we check if face is the top face of the bottleneck. So what do we do here? We take a surface then we check if it's a plane and if it's a plane and again I think const reference should be here then we take its location and uh, the idea behind this uh, logic is to find the topmost uh, the topmost surface topmost face in our model so we take the location, it's a Z coordinate, and then we compare with Z coordinate with Z max. And Z max is minus one. So yeah, it's going to be overridden uh, in, the, uh, in the first iteration. And uh, this way we find a face. 
All right, so this is, is a bit like, a, I, I would not say it's a dirty trick, it's a, it's a way how to find something, some feature geometrically by its coordinate. But of course, if you flip the orientation of your body, if you, if you make like a negative extrusion, uh, then this code is not going to work, I believe. So, for example, if I put here, not height, but not here, when I make a prism, I use this my height to extrude my face in the positive z direction. But if I put minus here, then my extrusion will go in the in the reverse direction, right? And then I have to go and modify my neck location like this. Neck height is still positive value. So let's see what will happen if I if I change the code like this. If I go and put like a negative. Uh, value for my height and um, keep using the rest of the code for thickening the solid like you see that here we run this make thick solid API function some setting here saying that we want to make our thick solid by join and uh, some other parameters here so let's try it like this and see what's going to happen if I just cheat this code a bit and I try to break this logic here. All right, it does not work anymore. And uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, this thickening operation is having some troubles with fillets. So let's also try to comment out these fillets. Because I mean, if the edge is blended, then it's probably a bit difficult for thickening operation to process such blended edges to make a thick solid out of them. Or I can easily be mistaken here. But yeah, you see, now it kind of works. We have uh, this prismatic shape. And somehow we don't have any thick solid. It's just like a raw solid here, right? So what, what's wrong with this code? Um, did this code work, by the way? We can try to output these faces to remove. Or this face to remove. So I'll go and put a diagnostic output right here. It's going to be my face to remove. Face to remove and let's uh, render it in red color. No, something is wrong. You see that the face to remove is, is different one. It's actually somehow this face. Because... Because of what? Because its location is probably also the most... Its location is probably also z equal to zero or something like that. So probably we are also looking for a face those axes is parallel uh, to DZ axis. So what we can do here, we can extend this uh, check quite a bit and we can uh, also test plane uh, axis. If it's, we can say is parallel, for example, it's not necessarily the axis, it's actually just the direction of this axis, because the axis is a direction with location, it's like a physical vector having its origin, and direction is a vector in the vector space. Its origin is always like 0, 0, 0, so we can test just the direction. And if the direction is parallel to dz, we also have to pass here some angular tolerance, let it be just one degree. Uh, so I'm going to convert uh, this degree to radians because I'm supposed to pass here the uh, comparison tolerance in radians. And uh, if uh, this plane axis is not parallel to DZ axis, then I'm not happy with such a face. And let's continue our search in this bigger loop. So let's see uh, what it's going to change in terms of uh, in terms of what phase to remove is going to be. As a result, I think I have to close this window first, right? All right, you see that now this phase is detected. So it's a correct phase and its uh, orientation, its uh, direction vector is really uh, parallel to the DZ axis. And now we also have 
like a real hollow solid, right? Yeah, we do have it now. We do have it now. And you can see that also uh, like this edge was blended by thickening operation. So what's going on next? What do we have next? Should I possibly uh, restore the original state of this code? So I'm going to get back to the original state. I am uncommenting this make fillets function once again. I do not want to use this negative height anymore. So let's get back to the positive height. It's a prism also here for the neck location. Neck axis is going to be also positive. And uh, this code with location is quite all right. I mean, you can kind of simplify it a bit. Because actually uh, this is a bit verbose and if you want you can simplify it using a brep adapter surface bus then a face. I, I'm not happy about this uh, downcasting also this dynamic type checking. So I want to simplify this whole business and I want to wrap my face with an adapter, which is a quite a conventional way of dealing with surfaces and curves. In Open Cascade, we have this BRAP adapter, something, either surface or curve. And instead of this, we can now check the type in a bit more simple way. So we can just go and ask for the type with the get type method and if this type is geom abs plane it means that our face we are checking the type of our face the geometric type of our face without extracting the whole surface of our face because actually there is a problem with this code if i get back to the original state of this code we take a surface out of our face and then we check the dynamic type of this face by uh, comparing this dynamic type with the standard type of geom plane. But it can also happen that this is not like a plane immediately. It can be also like a, a rectangular trimmed surface here. And if it's a rectangular trimmed surface, uh, then this if statement will not work, although this rectangular trimmed surface can still contain just a plane inside it. So if we use BRAP adapter surface instead like this, it's a bit more general way of doing the same thing. But we do not have to deal with uh, those uh, downcasts anymore. And instead of uh, accessing a plane, parametric plane here, we can just go and say something like get, or I think it's just, just plane, yeah, just plane. So we can extract our plane like this. And location is still available, but in a bit different way, like this. And also the axis is still there. So yeah, this code, I, I like it better. The axis, all right, here it's, it's quite okay like this. The bottle now is extruded to the positive Z direction and I have a hollowed solid with the opening on the top. So we still have this red face for the face to remove. If I hide it, you see it's our solid here. So it's quite okay. All right, let's probably get rid of face to remove because we now see it works. And this piece of code, I do not need it anymore. Now the interesting part is how to create like a thread, a modeled thread. Uh, we are going to build a couple of cylindrical surfaces representing two cylinders of our model thread, a major cylinder and minor cylinder. So we take the neck axis, the same axis as we used for our neck feature, and we also tweak a bit its radius. And uh, then the idea is to build a parametric curve in the UV space. And here, if you read the tutorial, the idea is to take advantage of 
is to take advantage of the parametric space of, of the cylindrical surface. So instead of trying to build this helical curve right in 3D, we rather build a 2D curve in the U space as an ellipse, like here. And I can even try to draw it. Just let's take those two ellipses and draw them. So in the domain viewer we have a couple of ellipses, the blue one and the white one. These are the two curves we built right here. And I can also go and overlay this uh, parametric domain of my cylinder. So you see that uh, these two ellipses they like go outside the parametric domain and I'm not sure it's going to be a problem. And actually I also see from here that these two curves are trimmed by pi. What would that mean? What if I move these diagnostic outputs after curve trimming? So here we have the curve, which is an untrimmed parametric curve. We trim them by the parameter uh, from 0 to pi. And we use then uh, those trimmed versions of those curves. So let's see how they are going to look like. Okay. So they are trimmed and we have them like this now. So the first uh, direction here, the first parametric direction is X or U direction. In, in the parametric space it's going to be not X but U and the green axis is V. So the U axis goes from 0 to 2 pi and uh, this uh, horizontal uh, uh, segment here corresponds to this edge on the bottom. This uh, another horizontal edge corresponds to this edge on the top. And then we have a couple of edges here and they both represent the seam edge uh, going through the period of our cylindrical surface. So this whole thing is parameterized from 0 to 2 pi and uh, uh, where, we have this, where we have these two parametric curves. And generally in open cascade it's not a problem to have a parametric curve going outside a periodic domain, a periodic a domain of a periodic surface. It means that those segments here, they will still be fine. You can still evaluate your surface in all the points lying outside our parametric rectangle because uh, the surface is still defined here. If you can evaluate a surface in 2 pi, you can the same way uh, evaluate it in the uh, in the in the u for the for the u value like 4 pi or 6 pi or 8 pi because the surface is periodic and according to the parametric formula of a cylinder it's still quite fine to to be outside the domain so i i mean that uh, these uh, these two curve segments were still they are still legal you can have them like this but let's see what's uh, what's going on then because we are not going to use just those curves, right? We are going also to create like a segment between them. I think we are going to join them and then make edges. And let's probably just go and uh, draw uh, not, not even edges, but the wires, because we have a couple of wires here. We have a thread in wire 1 and thread in wire 2. And we can redraw uh, those wires as shapes. Thread in wire 1 and thread in wire 2. And then color red and color, I don't know, uh, violet. You see that I have them here. And you see that I have a couple of wires. And they are still elliptical. You see they, they do the whole turn. In not even just one turn, if you just follow along uh, for one wire, you see that it, it turns around the z-axis several times, like one full turn and then second full turn. And that's exactly the idea of having uh, these four pi, four pi long uh, parametric curve. And if I extend this ellipse longer, then it will make more turns around the cylinder because I can evaluate this curve outside uh, the period of my surface and it still be fine and it, even, it will even have this meaning of like turning around the axis of my cylinder. The only thing I have to uh, care about is that in terms of the height dimension, 
in the vertical dimension, this curve should not exceed this, this uh, vertical dimension because otherwise it will also go outside the cylindrical phase I'm having here. So this is there, we benefit from the fact that each surface in open cascade is a parametric surface and it essentially means that we have this supplementary UV space that we can use to do some fancy math like here. We can build an ellipse and this way when we map it back to the 3D space we make it turn around the cylindrical axis as many times as we want and it's a mathematically precise curve that we obtain at the end. When we build the 3D curves for our wires, I think we need that just in order to make uh, those edges get their 3D curves because or otherwise uh, those edges are not going to be valid. And to make, uh, to make a solid geometry out of our curves, uh, we built swept solid here using this uh, BRAP offset API through section. So we have a flag true here saying that we want to build a solid, I believe. Yeah, it's a solid flag here. And then we add a couple of wires that we want to connect. And we do not want to check compatibility of those wires because, I mean, compatibility, what will happen internally, those two wires will be converted to spline curves and we do not want to check their, uh, their compatibility in the sense that uh, they have the same degree or the same number of, uh, you know, knots. Uh, I mean, they should have been defined on the same knot vector. And since we are using two ellipses, we are pretty sure that once they are converted to the spline curves, uh, they will be compatible by construction. So it's not, it's not uh, worth trying to make them compatible. And then we uh, build this threading and finally we build a compound of two shapes like our result and our frame. So potentially what I can do here, I can just make another fuse, uh, like I can take this BRAP Algo API fuse. And instead of building this compound, I just go and fuse my body and my threading and this way I obtain my new body. So I do not need this compound actually. And I rather I'll put this body as, as a result of my modeling. Just because, I mean, in a, in a good model, you'll expect uh, this thread to be fused together. And I think that uh, the idea of having a compound here is that sometimes Boolean operation might fail for some uh, specific parameter values. And uh, if Boolean operation fails, it can end up with having like an empty shape at the end. And in order just to work it around, they put a compound here at the end so that if it fails you still see the result visually because I mean you see the bottle, the bottle is visually fine and uh, it's not that important that it's a solid unless you are doing some computation and actually it's even I mean it, it could be even beneficial to exclude threading like that because uh, threads are not always modeled sometimes threads are just uh, defined declaratively or with some color so sometimes you, you will not even want to have threads explicitly in your model. But uh, here we go. I mean, uh, we have this bottle. I think it's, we can just go and show only. And you see it's, uh, if, I, if I print the contents, print like summary, you see it's a one compound, but this compound is composed of one solid. So it's, it's a perfect modeling result. Uh, one thing I can also do about it is to maximize those faces, but for that you can use the tool. Um, oh, let, let, let's, let's try to use it actually. And for that there is a tool in the package shape upgrade. There is a tool unify same domain. I think that's the correct name. Yep, so let's use this, this guy. Unify. I'm not sure what we are supposed to pass there. A shape. Unify edges. Unify faces. Both are true by default. Alright, so I think that we can just, just use it in the familiar way. We pass there our body. And we immediately obtain our result like this. That would be the conventional way of running the whole uh, modeling uh, business, but it's not going to work like this because, 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 because I think it's not uh, overriding this 
uh, conversion operator for returning our shape. Okay, that's not really convenient, but it means that we have to run it like this in a bit more verbose way. Unify and then shape. Yeah, it doesn't really follow this uh, syntax rule we have in open cascade operators. Like a single tool, not only does the job, but it also uh, serves as a one-liner that could immediately return you the modeling result without uh, a need to put several lines of code, like I had to, to do here. And I don't see any difference. Ta-da! Why? Why is what? Did I forget to run something? Okay. Okay. I mean, here we are also supposed to run build. Sometimes it's not that intuitive because even here in fillets, if we come back to the fillets operator, Okay, now here it, it's fine. Here we just initialize our fillet, then we add all the edges, and then when we access, once we access the shape, the, the modeling really happens. Like, it's not going to build any fillet, then you add an edge to the, to the tool. It will do the job when, once you access the shape. And uh, I, I would really expect that Unify same domain does the same thing, but Okay, it's not in the same package, probably can follow its own rules. At least you see that uh, the shape right now is, is cleaner. It doesn't have any artificial edges. I think it's still okay. Yes, it's still topologically correct. And you can go and export this shape to a step format, for example, and do whatever you want with, with, with this shape later on. So uh, that's basically it. I wanted to have a look at this exercise by myself because I only heard that it exists and I never, never played with it by myself. I think the most interesting part of this exercise is playing around with uh, the parameter curves. Thank you for watching this video and if you have any questions and if you have any ideas what uh, can we cover next or if you want to continue this sort of like code review format, you can also even send me some um, code snippets, if you will, and we can take a look at them together. I'll only ask you to make it uh, self-contained. So it is possible to uh, take a piece of code, insert it to the main function, and then see how it works without necessarily uh, deploying the whole you know, production environment or testing environment around your project, because it's going to be very time consuming. That's it. Thank you and see you later in the following episodes.